the tools menu pencil the pencil tool can be used for freehand drawing or it can be used in a zoomed in view for pixel by pixel editing when working with the pencil tool press with the left mouse button to draw with color 1 and with the right mouse button to draw with color 2 color 1 in previous versions of paint was referred to as the foreground color while color 2 was the background color in Paint for Windows 7 the pencil's thickness can be changed in the size tab to 1, 2, 3, or 4 pixels. Fill with Color The Fill with Color tool, or the Flood Fill tool if you like, is used to fill an area of a single color with a different color. Color 1 will be used if you press the left mouse button on the area to be filled. Color 2 will be used if you press with the right mouse button. This tool won't work successfully if the part you are trying to color is textured or has different shades of one color. It won't work well on areas in a photograph. Even though the eye may see just one color, there are bound to be many. Here I've snipped a plain brown area from a photo. The second picture shows how a small section of it looks when it's magnified. To make the third picture, I had Evron view adjust the brightness of the magnified section. The Fill with Color tool can only recolor pixels that are exactly the same. The Fill with Color tool always fills with a solid color unless you are filling shapes that you've just made from the shapes gallery and have a textured fill chosen there. T. The Text Tool The Text Tool in Paint for Windows 7 is a great improvement on earlier versions. The one exception to this is that Paint 7 always anti-aliases text, so the idea of stacking red text on top of black to get a shadowed effect seems to be a thing of the past unless you turn off smooth screen fonts in the performance section of advanced system settings. You can, if you like, just go ahead and insert your text as you always have, but I'd recommend that you open a new document and play with this tool. To begin inserting text, click on the text tool. Your cursor changes to an insertion bar. With this cursor, Drag to draw an oblong that you think will be about right to hold your text. Now, until you've completed these steps, don't click anywhere outside that oblong. The text toolbar appears. Type your text. Now drag the cursor over the text so that it becomes highlighted. Click the down arrow at the end of the font name box, so that a list of fonts drops down. Run your cursor without pressing any mouse buttons up and down the font list. As you do this, the appearance of the text you've typed will change appropriately. When you like what you see, click on the name of that font. The font list will close. You can repeat this process with the font size list. You can also click the background from transparent to opaque or vice versa, and change both color 1 and color 2. You can even run your cursor, while the color 2 button is operative, over the palette, and see how different backgrounds look behind your text. You can hover your cursor over any of the handle's little blocks on the bounding box of the text, press your mouse button and resize the box you've drawn, and if you hit the enter key from the end of your text the box will expand downwards. You can also use the handles to move the text box across the page, pulling it wider on one side and pulling it in on the other. Although there is no way to center your text automatically, you can put your cursor to the left of the text and hit the space bar as many times as necessary to center it. And that's not all. You can type more text, in a different color and a different font and size, right in the same text box. When you are making changes, only highlighted text will be affected. Oh. And in this version of Paint, you can use the text tool while zoomed in. Use the slider on the status bar to change zoom levels, though. Clicking on the magnifier pastes the text. Only when you are completely satisfied should you click anywhere on the page outside of your text box. When you click away from the text box, the text toolbar disappears and the text becomes part of your picture. It can no longer be edited in any way. The eraser. With the left button depressed, the eraser tool changes whatever it is dragged across to the background color color too. With the right button depressed, the eraser tool changes pixels of color 1 to color 2, 
but leaves everything else unaffected. You can use this to quickly and easily change an area of, say, red to one of, say, blue. I press the left mouse button while I drag the eraser across the first picture. Color 2, the background color, was white. For the second picture, I set color 1 to blue and color 2 to white. I pressed my right mouse button while I dragged across the picture. For the third picture, I set color 2 to pink and color 1 to lime green. I pressed my right mouse button while I dragged across the picture. There's no color tolerance in paint, only pixels of exactly the same color are affected, so it's pretty useless on textured color. The Color Picker The Color Picker tool is used to sample and match any color in your picture. It's especially useful when colors in the picture are different from those on the palette. Say you're zoomed in, working with the pencil tool on an area that has many shades of blue, and you want to use one of those shades. Click the color picker and click directly on the shade of blue that you want to use. The tool will immediately change back to the pencil, loaded with the color you want. The magnifier. The magnifier tool can be clicked over an area of which you want a closer view. Left clicks give a closer view. Right clicks zoom out so much less clunky than in previous versions of paint. Brushes Brushes let you paint in various widths and textures. Widths are controlled by the brushes and the size tool together, textures by the brushes. Please remember that anything you plan to recolor needs to have plain, solid color to begin with. All but two of the brushes use different shades of the base color to produce a textured effect. Here I've drawn a line with each of the offered brushes, using the same color and the same line width for each. I've labeled each line according to its tool tip in the gallery. On the right I've dragged the color eraser from top to bottom through all the different brush lines. You can see that only two lines, those labeled brush and airbrush, are able to be fully erased, that is, each of the others uses more than one shade of green. It can be helpful to consider the brushes as three separate items, the normal paint brush, the spray can or airbrush, and the rest as special effects brushes. The normal paint brush is the default, so that helps. I found the calligraphy brushes interesting. I was able to write a letter fairly convincingly with calligraphy brush 1. I was a dead loss with calligraphy brush 2. Once you have chosen a brush, you only need to click the main brush picture to use that same brush again. 